would like to introduce to you one of our 2017 confirmands here to pray and invocate God's presence into our community this morning. This is Amelia Quist, Emmy. Good morning. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come before you today to give you honor and praise for you are the source of all of our blessings. Thank you for every gift that we have been given. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and gather this day with Reverend Dr. Ruby Wilson, the Safe Haven UCC community, and Chris Coogan and the Good News Gospel Choir. We ask for your hand and blessing today, and we ask that you would guide and direct us so that we are full of wisdom, selflessness, and respect for one another. Thank you for helping us accomplish our work and goals this day. Amen. Amen. And friends, please join with me in our communal call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen Alleluia. We have not seen the risen Christ. We have not seen Jesus face to face. But we have seen him in the faces of everyone who loves and encourages us. We have not touched the wounds from the cross. But we have been called to bring healing to the start of the world. Brothers and sisters, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. A huge Norfield welcome to the Safe Haven community. Thank you for being here today. Good morning. The song says that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men, all souls unto me. Listen to it. Setting it oh, if I be lifted, I will, I will, yeah, unto me, if I yeah, be lifted, I will. Come on, declare Jesus came. With all his glory to reveal, to reveal the listen to this. Jesus came and died for you and me. He got up with all power in his hands. If I be lifted. Oh, I will, oh man, yeah, oh, if I, yeah, be, I will, oh, come on, declare Jesus came with all his glory to reveal, yeah, the heavenly hey if Jesus came and died for you and me and he got up with all power in his hands if I come on if I will draw a man Clap like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, let's clap like this. Here we go. Hey, surprise if I. Here we go. And. Be lifted up, yeah. Be lifted. Here we go. I draw.
Yes, come on. Come on and clap your hands. I will draw all men unto me, all souls unto me. And after you have been drawn to him, your soul shall say yes. Listen to it. and holy and risen God you call us to be people of faith and yet we are often people with doubts and fears we fear the loss of love but you know the strength of love and the power of prayer so help us to be faithful lovers we fear that peace may never come in the Middle East in Syria in Israel and Palestine where hatred and racism reign supreme but you God know that peace is growing there so help us to be faithful peacemakers. We fear that the hungry may never be fed, but where despair and hopelessness are present, you know, God, that there is enough food in the world. So help us to be generous and faithful. You specialize in impossibilities. You walked on water. You heal the nations. You forgive all of our sins. You set the captives free, and you free us from our own captivities. And this morning we pray for people who are filled with fear, who wonder whether you exist and whether you are listening to our prayers, who wonder what this whole community thing is all about. So even God, when we have that sinking feeling, give us the wisdom and the strength to turn to you because Lord, we want to believe, so help us in our unbelief. Give us faith as small as a mustard seed so that we can be your faithful people believing in your power to save, believing in your power to reign, 
and believing that we can share this good news with everyone that we meet. Risen Christ, our eternal Savior, like the disciples, we are gathered together the week after Easter, wondering whether it is all true, marveling at the possibility, and yet daring to hope. And in your extravagant generosity and in your boundless love, you appear to us in our fear and love and in our doubts, and you grant us oceans of your peace. Thank you for loving us as we are. Bless this day our sister worshiping communities of Safe Haven, Emmanuel, St. Francis, and Temple Israel, and bless their leadership and good works. Bless also the music of the Good News Gospel Choir and its leaders, as well as our own sanctuary choir and Dr. David Connell. We ask for blessings this day for Nancy Teal on the anniversary of Bob Kayser's death, and we ask for blessings for my family as we approach the anniversary of my father's death. We also ask for blessings for the Lewis family as we send Joan home today. Good morning. Good morning. There are songs for me to sing. Let me sing out. There are words for me to say. Let me speak. There is work for me to do. Let me be strong to do it. Let me shine. Let me shine. The path my feet must walk. Let me walk it, the work my hands can do, let them do, and the words I need to hear, oh give me ears to hear them, let me shine, let me shine, you are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill You are the light of the world Let your light shine Let your light shine And I will shine, shine, shine Yes, I will shine, shine, shine The goodness, the greatness, the love and the mercy of God. The love your heart can show, go ahead and show it. The kindness you can share, go ahead and share. This joyful dance of life. May you be free to dance it. May you shine, may you shine. Because you, yes, you, yeah. You are the light of the world. You're a city on top of a hill. Yes, I will shine, shine, shine. I'm going to shine so the world can see the goodness, the greatness, the love, and the mercy of God. And I will shine, shine, shine. Yes, I'm going to shine, shine, shine. I'm gonna shine, shine, shine I'm gonna shine so the world can see Oh, the goodness, the greatness, the love and the mercy The goodness, the greatness, the love and the mercy the
Good morning. Our first uh, scripture reading comes from 1 Peter chapter uh, 3, verses 1 through 9. Hear now the word of God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he's given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith from a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you've had, no, had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indes indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the ending of this reading. Second scripture reading today comes from John chapter 19, <laughs> verses 20 through 31. When it was the evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hands and put my finger on the mark of the nails and my hand on his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have to come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you, you may have life in his name.
and mountains. He has given us a level plains. in the rain oh, and with all with that he's provided, he's provided we're always with hurting each other seems that we just can't be contented with always fighting with each other so look upon us yeah. with compassion and please hear us, hear us when we cry and smile down on your, your helpless children oh, and master and father. And open our eyes. Oh, open our Praise the Lord, everybody. What a beautiful rendition. I, I mean, tears are filling my eyes. It's a song that we grew up with as little children. And to hear uh, my brother render it so well, given he's, his allergies and lack of voice. <laughs> I, guess he, I guess he was hiding on us when we were kids because he didn't like leading too many songs. I just, I could recall them leading one song and, and, and I think he was probably going through the change of life for a teenage boy. <laughs> and he began to sing, we were singing, he'll wash you whiter than snow, and he had to hit a note, oh, and I thought I was hearing alfalfa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give Reverend Dr. Brown a welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To Reverend Kelly, to Brother Tom, to what I uh, confirm, and Amelia, and those of you, my God's children, here assembled at Northfield Congregational Church. I am just excited to be here. I thank God for all of you. Good to see my sister-in-law way in the back. <laughs> sister Narada, always good to see you. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to have both, a couple of my in-laws in the house, uh, Narada and my brother-in-law, Reverend Dr. Floyd Blair. Good to have you here today. So I know the, the siblings get get a lot of plays sometimes, and the in-laws feel like nobody looks at us or pays us any money. <laughs> when they when they see even when they see the in-laws coming, doesn't matter what their names are, it's still the Wilsons are coming. <laughs> We're grateful to have you here, and I'm grateful for the associate pastor of. Safe Haven United Church of Christ here today. The Reverend Dr. Chris Watson is in our midst. And to our newly minted young minister back there, Minister Crystal Love, glad to see you here with your husband, Dr. Love. That's the Safe Haven family over there and also in the midst, and, and she's not getting much play, but she's my niece. This is my sister Kathleen's daughter, uh, Celeste. Every year she screams out that uh, no one ever tells her about Gospel Sunday. So I made sure I told her in advance so she 
be here. Now I feel some kind of way because they said the children are staying in service today, but I saw my brother Deacon Wilson and, and Reverend Kelly and my little grandniece Sanaya racing my son Jordan somewhere else. They were running so fast, I said, oh, they had to clear all the kids out of the, the, the children's place because Jordan is coming. And once he's coming, we're in trouble. It's just good to be in God's house. I know there is much to go, that the, the family of Northfield is going through uh, a time of bereavement. Please know that Safe Haven understands. We, uh, last year, my, the friend of mine that we were babies in the crib together, you may remember Mother Rosalind Bush, she's been here, when she was in the wheelchair. She came with a dog one year, her loving dog, but she passed away in March. And so we too are grieving as well. We lost our bass player who's been here and played with the music man. So uh, we know what you're going through. And i just like to take a moment, if you won't mind, just to take a moment of silence for in, in celebration and memory and honor of the life of Joan Lewis. And as it is said, may her life be an inspiration and her memory a benediction. Amen. We're just going to get to the word of God. And if you look in your program or in your Bibles and in it reads as thus in that Gospel of John, a week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And I'd like to speak briefly on the subject, the sunken place. Bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Now, God, I ask that you speak through these lips of clay, that your sermon will be delivered, that your message will be received. Speak, Lord, for your children are listening. So let the words of my mouth and the collective meditations of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight. God, you and you alone are my rock, my fortress, my redeemer. Amen. By now, you may already be familiar with the iconic image from Jordan Peele's physiological blockbuster thriller, Get Out. And if you haven't heard about it, I'm telling you about it. And if you haven't seen it, I'm telling you to go see it. It's a movie that uses horror to brilliantly critique and illustrate the covert white supremacy pervasive in America. There sits a hypnotized young black man in a big comfy chair, armchair. He, he's staring into space in fear as his eyes fill with tears. Hypnosis is just the first step in the process of a sinister plot leading to the transformation of people who will live out their lives in a perpetual state of social death. Although this has happened in the town before, this moment marks his and our first horrifying trip to the sunken place, a, a, a realm deep in the mind where a person's body is paralyzed and crushed by the weight of psychological trauma. The sunken place isn't something new. The sunken place befalls all of us. After all, we are human. We are finite. We are limited in our understanding. We are restricted in space, sinful in nature, rebellious by instinct, and mortal in being. We have only but a few days to live out, and many of those are days full of trouble. So I want to draw your attention to the disciples in today's gospel. For it has come to this. Jesus' disciples locked behind closed doors, quivering in fear, confused in mind, paralyzed in body, and sick deep down in the soul. So much has transpired from one week to the next. Just in the course of this particular pericope, this section from the 20th chapter of John's Gospel. The disciples have heard the first Easter sermon in history. 
preached from the mouth of Mary Magdalene. Egerthe, he is risen. That's the gospel. That is heart fixing, mind regulating, and what somebody would say, slap your mama, good news. He <laughs> is risen. And, and, and in the face of this proclamation of the risen Jesus, in the face of this proclamation of abundant life, of a world changed forever and open with possibilities, the disciples of Jesus hide in fear behind locked doors. The place where we found them last week on Resurrection Sunday in the absence of Thomas is the same place they're in this Sunday, the Sunday after Easter, now with Thomas present, locked behind the doors because of fear. Regardless of whether they are hiding from the horrors of the crucifixion or the wonders of the resurrection, these disciples are in hiding, immobilized by the seductive and destructive powers of trauma and fear. The actual physical location of these disciples is called the upper room, the place where Jesus joined them for the Last Supper. And it is the site of the birth of the church, which we celebrate seven weeks after Easter, Pentecost Sunday. But somebody here knows what it means to be sitting high and looking pretty, while in reality you feel as if the whole universe weighs heavy on your shoulders. Disciples are in the upper room. But in reality, they are weighed down low and trapped in the sunken place. They are leaderless. They are without hope. They are full of fear. Political activist, prisoner, and winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, Aung San Suu Kyi, said, the only real prison is fear. And the only real freedom is freedom from fear. A song from the production of South Pacific tells us, you have to be taught to hate and fear. You have to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drummed in your dear little ears. You've got to be carefully taught. One pastor said every single day we are taught to be afraid. From crime rates to unemployment, terrorism to isolation, we are a people living in fear. We're told to fear ISIS. We're reminded that we're on the brink of nuclear war with an untold number of countries. We're told to be afraid of immigrants. We're afraid of sickness. We're afraid of loss. We're told to be afraid of the wealthy. We're afraid of what we lack. We're afraid of our failures. We're afraid of our past. We're afraid of each other. The rise of Donald Trump in American politics speaks to the depth and influential nature of our national and international fear. We're a people afraid, and that fear has trapped us. That sunken place, that place of fear, is one of our default responses to trauma. We hunker down behind locked doors, afraid of more violence from whatever it is that attacked us in the first place. And many of our churches, and many in our churches, are locked behind closed doors, paralyzed by the fear of losing creature comforts, fear that our finances will flee. We're called people of the resurrection, yet we can't get out from behind closed doors, and we're unable to loose ourselves from the sunken place. But listen to the good news found in verse 26 of the text. A week later, this is the Sunday after Easter, a week later, his disciples were again in the house. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Into the disciples' self-preservation and self-imposed sunken place, into this prison, this Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Did, did you hear the good news in the verse? See, may, maybe I just need, need to lift up just one word, just to take a small word, because word, if you look at just one word found in the verse, it, it's enough to excite me. The, the, the Greek word is theatra. It's a, it's a word used in the gospel to talk about the entrance to Jesus' tomb, theatra. It's the word for door or gate. Theatra, it's the word used earlier in John's gospel when Jesus says, I am the theatra, the door. I am the gate. I am the door for the sheep to enter or depart from the sheepfold. And they have to literally pass over my body. I am the theatra, the entrance into protection and shelter and the exit to liberty and plenty. I am the theatra, the door that lays down my body, lays down my life across the entrance to keep the sheep in and to keep wolves and other 
predators out. The text literally, literally reads that Jesus of locked doors, gates, came and stood in the midst of them. The one who is the theater appears in the room. I know folks said, dang, but was it magic? Was he invisible? Did he have a real body? He, he didn't have to be any of those things. He was the door itself. I am the door. When we're trying to think of how to get out of this way and that way, Jesus says, I am the way. He is the door into the room, into the darkness, into the fear, into the sunken place. He proclaims his peace. Christ says, peace be with you. You know what I found out? Just him speaking peace brings peace. Just, just, just him saying peace creates peace. And, and, and if you believe in him, if you believe in his resurrection, then you know humanity has been brought into a new dimension of reality because the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. Those who have accepted the reality of the resurrection and its power are people who have been and are being in the process of being pulled out of the sunken place by the most amazing power to have entered into human history. And because he lives, we too live. Not in a hypnotic daze, not stuck in the memory lane of a bad past, but we have been lifted up out of the sunken place. And we walk in power. We walk in victory and in peace and in joy. And we have peace with God, peace in your own minds, peace with each other. Jesus said, all this peace be with you. Not peace like the world gives, but peace like I can only give. Christ's peace, that kind of peace, lifts you out of the sunken places. You can get over your failures. You can rise above your history. You can outlive your mistakes. And the reason why I know this is because the Bible says that every day we grow in Christ, we are being changed into his likeness. The reason why I know this is so, because the Bible tells us that now we are the children of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That's the good news. It does not matter what your condition is. It doesn't matter if you're down in the sunken place. Just know that Jesus gives peace and we can be changed. That sick folks can be made whole. That burned out folks can be reinvigorated. That folks labeled slow learners can become scholars. The fallen can be picked up. The confused can be made to understand. Selfish people can become generous. Hateful folks can be taught how to love. And sinners can be changed. Change can come about. Different Differences can blend, divisions can be reconciled, cities can be changed, and folks, we as the church can rise up to levels we have never been risen before. And up from the sunken place, there is joy in tribulation, there is hope in calamity, there is growth in grief, there is possibility in problems, there is peace in chaos, there is strength in the struggle, there's light in darkness, there's love in life, and there is life in death. He went all the way down church. I like how somebody in my church said, when you think of how far he came down, to come down so low, to stoop down so low. Apostle Paul said he descended to the lower earthly regions. He who came from so high went down so low into the sunken place and led captivity captive so he could lift us up and form a pathway all the way from earth to glory, we serve a risen Savior who is in the world today. He is the theatre, the door, the Savior of locked doors, shuttered gates, and sunken places and spaces. Thanks be to God. Won't you bow your heads with me? You are the God of the sunken place. You lift us out of places that we put ourselves into. And you lift us out of places that we were just born into. We thank you for being our God, our Savior, our salvation. And God, if there is one here under the sound of my voice that finds themselves in the sunken place, doesn't matter how it looks on the outside, look on the inside, oh God. You who are the lifter of our heads, you who lifted Jesus up from the grave and let them know that if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, it will quicken even these mortal bodies of ours 
so that we can come up from the sunken place and be a beacon of light in a world of darkness. That we will be a beacon of hope in a world of despair. That in a world that is dying, that we will be your voice that tells the world, you shall not die. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.